Hey everybody, it's Brent Central Arkansas. Gene and I are headed to Corpus Christi for a couple weeks, and I need to make these two greenhouses self-sustainable for that duration. Nobody's going to come here and take care of it for me. Uh, I don't want to keep doing that, so I've got to come up with options that'll, uh, that'll allow me to take care of it myself while it's gone. So let me show you a quick update on the small winter greenhouse behind me and the summer greenhouse over here, what's going on, the changes I've made, and how I'm going to go about trying to make this work while we're gone. Follow along. Take care. Okay, I also got to get the summer greenhouse ready to last while I'm gone as well. Sorry, it's quite windy as you can tell by the plants growing. I'm trying to cover it with my hand. Uh, but anyway, here's the water culture beds. And you can see where I moved the lettuce over and I've been doing some cut and come, you know, cutting some, eating, coming back, getting some more. I've got the beds both loaded with uh, cabbage, celery broccoli and i think that's about it i'll take you i'll show you a little bit underneath here you can kind of see the roots are starting to develop this is the lettuce that was brought from the winter greenhouse like i said i just put my hand up here for size once i moved them out here into the sun with some shade cloth blocking some of the sun these things have really, really enjoyed their new home. As you can see there, I moved the bell pepper and the cherry tomato out here. Got a little bit of something going on here. Not sure what it is. So I'm just going to trim it off and we'll see what happens. There's my squash on the center there. I trimmed off the majority of the leaves towards the bottom. And uh, all the little squash, you can see here there's quite a bit of little squash on this one too, still. But... Uh, I picked a lot of it off because I don't want it trying to die off uh, while I'm gone. In this first fawn, this side closest to me, you can see the turnip greens. Now I've showcased these big turnip greens a couple times and you can see they're going to seed. And each one of these little tendril, not tendrils, but those are actually seed pods. They will get bigger and uh, when they dry out the seeds inside will be viable but i moved them back in here i had them out um, in another location i'll show you that now see here with the bees that they're pollinating these turnip greens and you can see the little seed pods on these flower stems as they grow taller are starting to form the reason why I move these pots out here is because of all the flowers growing on the trees. You know, pollinators going all over the place on these trees. So once the seeds form, I'm going to move these pots back. And uh, we'll continue to water them until the seeds develop further. But I sure do love me bees. They're awesome insect. Awesome. Okay, so I've also planted some of my squash here and I won't be around to see if it survives or not. So I'm sure hoping it does. But this whole row is uh, my squash. So this is fawn two and fawn two I've got potatoes. I'll, I got a video coming up on that. So I'll explain that one in that video. But and this, these other two uh, sides here the middle and the other side there's 20 containers there and they all have tomatoes and peppers in them and I'll cover that later hopefully they'll survive while I'm gone fawn three you've seen this stuff quite a bit um, I've got a P video coming up PEA video <laughs> coming up and I've got some uh, tomatoes growing here this is uh, cabbages obviously uh, some leeks I'm trying to cut them and see if what that does some bulbing onions that'll probably disappear my 
celery, which is getting a good size. I took some smaller ones out of here and put them in the water culture beds. These are Brussels sprouts. They're getting some good size on them. And aren't those plants pretty? I mean, little to no damage whatsoever. Love this time of year. Okay, on this side of that same fawn, two, three, fawn three, I've got some spinach here It's coming along. I'm going to see if the neighbor will take some of those. Some turnip greens, those will be about perfect size for a nice uh, mess when I get back. And three things of carrots here. And the carrots are starting to get some good size to them. Let me see if I can put my finger here so you can kind of see the size of these. And uh, these things are going to be really good. Okay, kale plant. I have cut this thing back. This is my second time. I've cut it way back to the nub. And it's growing these little shoots off like crazy. I don't want all those little shoots. I just want this one coming off here. And, and it is regrowing. I don't think I'm going to be able to kill this kale plant. So, uh, yeah, got those on there. Anyway, uh... That's what's going on with the kale. I love this plant. Don't have to worry about planting kale. That's that's about a year old, maybe even older, by now kale. Over here on the one, two, three, fourth fawn, it's a single fawn. That's because it's going to be tomatoes. But you can see I've, I've got a little tomato. Hopefully it'll make it. Some leeks going on. Some of the leeks have some pretty good size to them. As you can see here, when I get back, I'm going to harvest them all. And then I've got my Oregon sugar pod peas that I've harvested. And I've got a video on that, which I'll show later. And then the last fawn, I got a couple squash growing vertically. And uh, those are a butternut and some tomatoes as well. Now, while I'm gone, I've got this water storage barrels up there. That's regular water. It's about 250 gallons, five, 55 gallon uh, barrels that are plumbed together underneath here and they gravity feed the distribution tank there and the return tank there now when hopefully and get over here where I'm not in the uh, wind for you now when this thing fills up gravity fills it fills up with regular water and at the same time I've got a pump in this distribution tank that goes out normally to the no weed garden, but I've got it going back into here. So right now it's pumping back into here at the exact same time this one's pumping to the rest. So that is essentially recirculating. Now it's going to use some nutrient and the way I put pump nutrient into it, at the same time it gravity fills from these storage tanks with regular water uh, into the distribution tank. These two tanks, 55 gallon drums, have um, hydroponic nutrient in it. This particular one has nothing but calcium nitrate in it. Nothing but calcium nitrate. It has a pump and it pumps uh, through a line right here over into that barrel. And I keep that covered and then I put these slats back on top here. I'll put those back when, I, when I'm uh, done filming. But anyway, over here, I've got Master Blend and Epsom salt uh, mixed together. Now, the reason why I don't have all three components mixed together is because they're super concentrated. And if you add calcium nitrate to this, to Master Blend and Epsom salt, like super concentrated, you'll have nutrient fallout. You'll have Basically, the calcium nitrate, I, I believe it is, will uh, not dissolve completely. So that's what's going on with that. I've got all this. I've got them on a feed schedule of twice a day, pumping from there. It's on this timer. This timer, has, it's a dual timer. It has one side that goes down to this power strip. And this power strip has plugs for this distribution tank and this distribution distribution tank so they come on at the same time and this one goes to an air pump that that comes on twice a day and agitates the fertilizer tanks here and over there and that just it's very flat fast 
that used to be the air pump that was in the winter greenhouse but it was too loud and extremely powerful for what I needed so now I'm using it as a mixer now this tank like I said it gets water for gravity fit from the storage barrels and it's pumped from the two master blend and calcium nitrate barrels in here let's see if I can see. well it's in here I don't want to get my on it but anyway when it pumps in there it's got a air bubbles as you can see it it's constantly going so it gets it keeps not only the whole system aerated but it also mixes the nutrient as it comes in with the water okay so that is it for preparing the greenhouse uh, for our trip now I'm gonna have my neighbor I'm gonna talk to him in about an hour and he's going to come over here a couple times and uh, he does not know how all this stuff works. It's probably big time overwhelming for him. But uh, he's going to come look for basically leaks and stuff like that while I'm gone. And I wasn't able to plant everything. Like you can see out there, the no-weed garden, which I've got another video on. Um, if it, I'm not sure if it'll be published before this one or not. But anyway, um, all the plants that go out there are all here. And there are squash and melon, all different kinds. And I am not able to get the system going, so these are going with me. I may do a video on the traveling cucurbits. <laughs> because I've got cucumbers, I've got squash, I've got melons. Well, I've even got okra. But anyway, um, these are smaller. Hopefully I can keep them alive. I've got some cups and I've got um, to transplant them if I need to and some more mixture here so that was a lot of information and the reason why i separated the winter greenhouse from the summer greenhouse here everything is doing great in here um, it always kind of seems to do that for me occasionally i get some aphids or some mites i uh we do epic battle when that happens and most of the time i win sometimes i don't but um, that, that's pretty much it for the summer greenhouse. I'm um, going to probably do a separate one on the orchard and the pond. I got a request for those. And so I'm going to do those here in just a minute. But we leave tomorrow morning. And whoo, man, between getting our RV ready for the trip and doing all this stuff, make sure it's ready. It has been a little bit overwhelming, but I'm almost done. So that makes me a happy camper, literally. You guys take care. We'll see ya.